So the next thing that we want to do is add a custom property restrictions here. So earlier we talked about this property picker and that you could use it to string together very advanced queries. And by default there are several property restrictions that are available based on the information that most SharePoint deployments um, have in common. However, your SharePoint deployment um, in the types of content that users want to access is probably very unique. And so, for example, if you're an engineering firm, then you might have people that want to search for uh, material types or expiration dates or part codes instead of just these default settings here. Uh, if you're a law firm, uh, maybe you want to restrict whether uh, the information you're looking for is about tort law or uh, criminal law. And so, why not provide your users with a drop-down option for that? So I can't provide a general rule about the exact uh, property restrictions that you want to make available to your users, but I can show you how to make the property restrictions once you know what you want. And so with all uh, everything and uh, working with uh, search projects, I, I would recommend that the first thing you do is take a step backwards and ask your users what they're having trouble finding. Um, don't just go with the assumption that you think you, you know what property restrictions are going to be um, useful for them because uh, by talking to your users you're going to find out a lot of unique information. And then you can use this information as well as your, your knowledge of the environment's metadata to create property restrictions because all of these property restrictions do require that you have metadata in your environment obviously and then also you do need to have those properties mapped to a managed property so that they're used in search. And if you don't know how to do this, please check out our webinars, uh, any of the other ones. We have uh, plenty of information about how to map managed properties, and I'll be posting a quick tip here within the next week um, just specifically on how to map a managed property. So for this example, I'm going to show you how to make two different property restrictions. Uh, we're going to do one for dream quality and another for ratings. We notice that this site uh, all is all about dreams here. So uh, these are both properties that I've previously set up and mapped to manage properties. The ratings property restriction has additional complications before you can take an advantage of that as a particular feature. But my colleague Robert Pittock has always uh, already posted an entire webinar on surfray.com that shows um, how to set up ratings for use in search. For those of you that are watching and followed the instructions from, instructions from his webinar a couple weeks ago on this subject, um, all you have to do is watch this recording and, and follow these instructions here. Uh, and you won't need to do anything else uh, to use the ratings property restrictions other than what I show. So I do also want to point out the dream quality is a text data type and ratings is an integer data type. So when we were looking at different uh, property restrictions here earlier, we noticed that different property restrictions provide different options. So here for a text data type like author I have contains, equals, does not equal. For uh, something that's more of an integer I have uh, more mathematical formulas right here. So these are going to provide slightly different options. So now to show you how to actually add these property restrictions, I'm going to go to my web part again as we did before. So first things first, I need to go to Site Actions and edit the page. And so just like before, I'm going to go and edit the web part. So um, at this point, after uh, choosing to edit my web part, I do want to note that I'm going to get a little bit more complicated this, this time than just uh, marking a checkbox. I actually need to uh, edit the uh, advanced search parts uh, web parts XML. And so with most customizations in SharePoint, uh, to make adjustments to anything but the basic settings that you're just finding at this web part with these checkboxes, you're going to need to be comfortable with XML code. And as a result, to edit the web part, uh, I'm going to actually go to that XML code here. So first things first, I'm going to open up the properties uh, area here and I'll find this properties XS, uh, XML. And so here I'm going to choose uh, click to use builder. And here I get to uh, all of the XML uh, for this particular web part. So first thing I'm going to do is select all of this and take it into a view that's a bit easier to manage because this is definitely not the easiest view to be working with. And 
to do that, for any of you uh, that have watched uh, previous web webinars that I've done, uh, we're in for a little treat here. Uh, I'm, I'm getting smart and uh, not using uh, a Notepad anymore. We're actually going to use Visual Studio Express here. So what I'm going to do is just create a new file here, and we're just going to choose that it's going to be XML, so it formats nice for us. And I'm just going to copy this XML all in here. And you'll notice now that I'm, I'm broken down into a, a visual style that I can, I can read a bit easier. And so, as a word of caution, if you're not comfortable with XML, then please be careful doing this. Uh, if you save any edits that aren't done properly and don't have a backup copy of the XML, then you may find yourself uh, deploying a new search center uh, due to the bad code. And so, to mitigate the risk, I always do recommend that you save a backup copy of the XML before editing, and that way you can reset it if you have uh, if you've done a mistake. Now, fortunately, I've already uh, have a backup copy there, so uh, don't need to do that in this case should also note that I would definitely not consider myself a developer, so I would encourage you to not be completely scared off at this point if you haven't worked with XML in the past. Um, looking at this code, I can actually see some logic popping out of it here. Um, so just like my advanced search page, I do see a list of languages right here. So we see these language defs, and, uh, and I have quite a few languages that are not being shown yet on my advanced search page, and I could make those available if I wanted to, and I'm, I've got some different definements for for those various different languages. Uh, moving down the list, uh, I see that I get to uh, uh, property definitions. And so you'll notice that these are just various properties that are shown on the advanced search picker. So here we see URL show, was showing up, size, last modified date. And all this is doing is saying, OK, here's the property. And here is the particular uh, data type that that property is. We talked about text and integer and date time, different uh, property types. And then here's actually the metadata that's going to be mapped to that particular property. And so it, it actually creates some logic here. Here's what the user sees, here's what SharePoint's actually reading, and um, here's the data type so SharePoint knows uh, what types of values to allow you to work with. So finishing out this bulk of XML here, I actually just see uh, a lot of copies of various different uh, result types. Uh, uh, property references here. And so all this is doing is I have a different property reference for each different result type. So here I have all results. If you notice I go down, I have something very similar for documents, something very similar for Word documents, Excel documents, and PowerPoint presentations. And so uh, there's a lot going on here, but it actually breaks out into three pretty easy to manage sections. And so Instead of recreating a lot of this code, uh, I'm just going to use what's already in place here. And we talked about that I was wanting to add two things. I want to add a property picker for dream quality, and then I want to add a property restriction for ratings. So these are pretty easy to do. All I have to do is, uh, starting at the top of this code, run down here past languages, get this property definitions, and I need to define these two properties. So to do that, I'm just going to copy this last line here and throw in a copy of it. And I need to define the metadata property that I'm going to be working with, and I know that in this case I'm going to be working with dream quality and I know that that metadata type is a text data type you do need to make sure that those are are both right there you're gonna throw a few errors uh, and then I can really title this whatever I want but uh, just for logic's sake here I'm just going to title it dream quality instead of just adding uh, going back and forth between the XML and in the advanced search page here I'm just gonna add both uh, dream quality and the ratings property at the same time so they're very very similar processes here now I'm just gonna copy this throw it in and now I'm just going to do a property for uh, ratings actually I think it's called rating in this environment um, and I know that rating is actually a decimal data type and I'm just going to call it rating again just for simplicity's sake so this is actually creating the definition between dream quality uh, the name and in the particular metadata now what I need to do is actually add those uh, to each one of my options so actually let it show up when I have all results let it show up when I have documents let it show up when I'm choosing word documents um, from the result type drop-down
If I want to, I don't have to show this uh, these properties for every one of these uh, result types, uh, but in this environment, I'm just going to show you uh, both of uh, show them for all of them. So here, I just need to change the prop or add a property reference. Again, I'm just going to copy that modified, copy it down here, and I'm just going to do the property reference for rating. Actually, let's do uh, dream quality just to keep them all in the same order. Now keep in mind this is the actual mapped uh, property, so you do need to remove spaces or anything like that. You're actually uh, using the metadata mapping here. This isn't the name that you're displaying to the user. And I'm going to copy that again, and I'm just going to do rating. So now I've actually defined the properties, made the connection, and then I'm going to be showing it for my all results. Just to make, uh, make this show up for each one of the other sets of results, I'm just going to copy what I've done here and throw it in to each one of the other fields here. So now I should have dream quality and ratings showing up for PowerPoint presentations, Excel documents, Word documents, all those various different options there. Since I'm already working with the XML, I'm going to save time on a setting I was going to make later and, and just add it now. So normally I'd advise you not to make too many changes like this at one time since typos are easy to make uh, when working with XML and if you make less uh, edits at one time it's easier to uh, retract them. But for the sake of time and because I have a uh, a, both a default XML and a completed XML backed up. Um, I'll do this all at once. So getting into the actual settings uh, we were talking about earlier, I mentioned the final thing that I wanted to show you with uh, customizing an advanced search page was to add an additional uh, result type uh, refiner or result type um, selection. So I can actually see these options here like I mentioned I have my all results, my documents, uh, my Word documents right here. And so uh, maybe you want to add uh, additional result types here. Maybe you want your architects and engineers to be able to restrict uh, search for just Autodesk files. Uh, or in the example I was giving earlier, maybe you want to give your marketing team the ability to search for just the various files found in the Adobe Creative Suite. And so to do this, uh, you'll want to provide a new result type, uh, result type filter. Uh, since I don't have Autodesk and Adobe CS files in this environment, let's just use an easy example. Let's say I want to provide a result type for just PDFs. Uh, I'll notice here that uh, all, all results obviously will come back with that. Um, documents, as long as a PDF is considered a document there, uh, that will come back. But then I notice here that like Word documents, for example, I can actually see the different file extensions that are coming back. So we'll see doc, docx, dot, docm. And so I can define those properties. Here, instead of again recreating a bunch of codes, I'm just going to make my life very easy. I'm just going to copy this PowerPoint presentation uh, field. And notice that I do need to copy all the way down to that, res that first result type uh, hashtag there for, uh, for the closing tag. And I'm just going to copy all that and throw it back in there. So now I have PowerPoint presentation 1, PowerPoint presentation 2. I'm just going to edit this. So we'll just say uh, display name PDF and the name is PDF. And so instead of having all these different file extensions, let's just cut out all the ones except for PDF. Make sure that you don't remove those those tags that are already there. Uh, make life a little difficult on yourself there and tracking down an error. Uh, but uh, we've noticed here that I've also already have the dream quality and ratings uh, fields there. So this should allow me to just show my uh, my PDF uh, ratings there or PDF result type there. So at this point now I've added all of my settings that I want to add. I just need to uh, select all of my XML and copy it right back into SharePoint. So I'm going to do that here. I've copied the XML and we're going to go back to my text editor, delete the XML that I had before, and again, don't do that unless you've already backed that up somewhere, uh, and then I'm going to click OK. At this point, uh, now I've edited my XML, uploaded my new XML, I'll click Apply, 
Again, if you haven't followed this so far, uh, obviously you have a recording, uh, and I do make this code available to you um, after after the webinar um, on surfray.com. So uh, that will be available there if you if you miss something, because I know we're moving around pretty quickly here. But I'm going to apply and then click OK to set my changes. And then last thing, I need to make sure that I check in my page because my users can't use it until I check it in. So let's just make sure that my property restrictions and everything I've built actually are showing up. Here we see that now I have a PDF result type. We'll also see that I have my new property restrictions here. Here I can click on dream quality and we could just say uh, let's search for dreams that are good. <laughs> and then let's search for ratings and ratings we noticed was an integer value so it has a little different options than my dream quality let's say that I need to find things where the rating is greater than 2 uh, so we'll do this search right here and make sure everything's working And now we notice that um, all my results here have a rating that is higher than 2. You can see that with that nice, uh, pretty uh, star rating that Robert added in in our last webinar. Again, you can check that out uh, if you'd like to. And we can also even see the query string. You notice the advanced search page actually passes this query string over to the simple search page. So this is a nice little interesting way that you can check, uh, check that out. Uh, we do notice that my dream quality is, uh, is, like, is equaling good there as well. Um, so uh, just some interesting different ways that you're able to change and edit and customize that advanced search page. There's plenty more that you're able to do there, uh, but these are just some of the more basic settings that you can do with XML.